Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. This is episode number four of Shorts, and today we're going to talk about why typing in the wrong COM port configuration string into the Tandy 102 actually worked. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. It's easy to jump on their website and get your quick quote for your next circuit board. They also offer CNC services, 3D printing, enclosure making, everything you need for a complete product. They also do surface mount and through hole assembly, stencils, and a range of other products and services. If you need advanced circuit boards like flex boards, microwave boards, that type of thing, they got you covered there too. Whatever your PCB or prototyping needs, PCB Way has you covered. I just did a quick start video on the backpack here, and when I typed in the serial configuration string, some eagle eyed viewer said, Hey, that was actually wrong. And yes, technically it was, but it still works. And let's go through that. I'll show you what I did. We'll go over here to Telcom. And if I type in stat, this is what I showed in the last video, 98N1DNN. You can see what we're set to right now. It beeps. Well, that beep is actually an error beep saying there was a syntax error. If I type in stat without the string there, you can see that we did change from E to D here. So it did take it. And the part that's wrong is this NN at the end here. That's superfluous for this Model 102, as well as its older brother, the Model 100. But for the Model 200, that's correct. Let's jump over to the PC and see if we can figure out why this actually works, even though technically it's wrong. When folks first ask why I did it that way in the video, I was like, well, we did it that way in the user's manual, as you can see here, because it works and it only gives you two choices. You either have a Tandy or an NEC, and you can use either configuration string. It makes it simpler. And not only that, but we copied right what they did in the manual. And you're saying, well, where did this NN come from? What does that have to do with? Well, if you go all the way up to the Tandy 200, you can see it has more information possible in the configuration string. So that's why we wrote the manual that way, and I did the video that way to kind of follow along with what Tandy themselves did. But why does it work if you're typing in the wrong thing? I really got to wondering about that because I didn't know. Luckily, someone has already disassembled the ROM in the Model 100, and there were some comments, but since I am not super fluent in 8085 assembly, I made a lot more comments here so I could follow along with what was happening. And this is the section of code we go to when we're using the stat command. You can see we go down through this section of here where we're setting all the RS-232 parameters. And that's everything preceding the NN. And when we get down to this section where you see RST1, the RST opcode is sort of like call, but rather than specifying the address, you just specify the number. And this is like a vector jump type command. And what it does is compare M with the byte following the command, which in this case is 2C and hex, which happens to be a comma. So what we're doing here is after we've set all the RS-232 parameters, we're seeing if the next character is a comma. So if we go look at this section of code that handles the RST-1, it's at 8 hex. So it's copying some stuff around and doing a comparison. And if they don't match, it's going to generate a syntax error. So this is how we're getting that beep. And just for fun, we can use virtual T to follow along and watch this actually happen. Okay, here we've got virtual T 1.6 running, and I've got a breakpoint set at 51ED, which is the entry into this section of code that sets the RS-232 settings. So I'm going to go over here to Telcom. 
I'll type in stat 9,8,n1,d,n,n. And remember everything up to the NN is actually legitimate for the Model 100. And now I will hit enter. And we're breaking at 5,1,ed. Let's get this guy out of the way now. So I'm going to step over some of the stuff till we get down closer into here, which is what we're interested in. Here we are, ready to call RST1 and compare the next character with the comma. So I'm going to step into that. We can see this here. Now if we go over here. So here we are at 0008. And so we step into this one line at a time. We're going to do our comparison. And then we get down to jump if not 0 to 0446 which is going to generate our syntax error and eventually we'll get the beep. So that's all that's happening there is it's merely following along setting all our uh, COM port parameters until it doesn't see that comma then it says oh there's a syntax error. So it doesn't matter what we type as long as the next character is not a comma it doesn't care and we'll get a syntax error. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this shorts episode. We found out why that generalized configuration string for the COM port actually works, and it's kind of interesting. But here's a teaser for you. You don't get the beep if you run that in the program. Let's run over and run this basic program here. And it just says, okay. Notice there was no beep, and if we list it, we can say I've got the NN after there, but when it's parsing this line in the basic program, it doesn't give you that beep. Now, I'll leave that as a, a puzzle for someone else to solve, a homework assignment, if you will. If you figure out why that does that, just leave it in the comments section down below. As always, I'd like to take a moment to say thanks to all my Patreons and people who support the channel in other ways. You are the ones that help keep this channel going, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you, and until next time, bye.